What's up everybody, it's Joe with JBlake Photo. I've got another video for you. I wanted to talk today about taking your adjustment layers in Photoshop and turning them into LUTs to edit your video with. Okay, so I took a trip down into a, uh, into a slot canyon uh, that's not too far from my house a couple of weeks ago. I did a vlog about it. I'll go ahead and, um, I'll go ahead and put a card, uh, for that right there. And while I was there, I took some really cool still photos and I was editing that photo and I thought to myself, man, I really like the look of this. Um, I was going to post the photo on Instagram and I thought, you know, I really want to take this look and I want to make it available for my videos. I want to throw this into my MLUT plugin, uh, in Final Cut so that I can, I can throw this on some of my recent drone footage, um, maybe even put it on the Dropbox and make it available uh, on my iPad for LumaFusion. So what I wanna do is I wanna hop into Photoshop and I wanna show you it's super easy to create a lookup table, a LUT file uh, for use in your video editing. So let's go ahead and hop into Photoshop and we're gonna take a look. Okay, so this is the photo that I was working on in Photoshop uh, for my Instagram feed. It was a sunset that went through uh, the Slot Canyon and I just, I wanted to be able to um, take the same kind of look and I wanted to be able to do it in video too. So um, these are the adjustment layers that I added to the original base image. If I go ahead and turn all these off, you'll actually see what the original image looked like. So it's still a good image. It's just, you know, doesn't have a whole lot of pop to it. So I added a curves layer, just to add a little bit of contrast. I wanted to go ahead and push the blacks up just a little bit, just to give it that kind of distressed kind of filmic look. So I used the levels adjustment for that. Um, I added another curves layer because I wanted to bring the overall um, contrast or rather the overall exposure down a little bit. Um, I added an exposure layer to bring the brightness up a tad. And then I did just some color uh, just to kind of give the different shadows and midtones uh, some just a little bit of, little bit of character. Uh, so I put all that together and then what I do is you go ahead and go to file and you go to export. And you'll see one of the options here says uh, color lookup tables. So now this one's not going to work because I did some adjustments to it and it's actually, it's not a flat background layer. So actually, you know what, let's go ahead and play with this other image that I've got. And this is a, uh, a shot that I took when I was up in the snow uh, just a while back. And I've done a little bit of a modification to this image in Lightroom, but really I want to add some really kind of cool, um, kind of characteristics to this image. So the first thing uh, that I did on this image was I actually used the healing brush tool and I just, I pulled out that little, that little twig that was in the snow. It was really kind of driving me nuts. And kind of like that other image, I added a contrast layer uh, with curves. Um, it's not a traditional S curve. I got real specific with it, um, but I wanted to really kind of pull out some of the details here. Um, and then added just a little bit of that kind of, um, you know, reduced black color so that, you know, we got that kind of filmic look, uh, added an additional curves layer to give it a little more, kind of push it down a little bit further and then brought that brightness back up to really kind of, I really wanted to push and stretch this image. Um, and then I added some, some of those color layers just to mix in and modify some of the, the shadows. So here's my end result image, right? And I can actually, I can actually throw all of these into a folder here. And then I can kind of turn that on and off and you can kind of see the difference there. So I really like that look. I think it looks cool. It's kind of Polaroid-y. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to export and I'm going to go to color lookup tables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a description. I'm going to call this um, snow steps. And under quality, um, there's a couple of different options you can go with. You can go with just kind of their default high or medium, low. Um, depending on what you're using these for, there are some very specific quality or grid point numbers. The grid points have to do with how many points are on each side of the cube. Um, and that relates to how the lookup table calculates. Uh, so you might need something specific uh, for like a camera, if you're trying to use a, um, a LUT file on your camera, like if you're, if you have a Panasonic or a Sony and you can actually load a LUT file into your camera, you're going to need to make these a specific number. 
Um, so like 65 I know is, is required for some Sony cameras. Um, I'm just gonna keep it at 64 um, and, and that works perfectly fine for me. And I'm gonna hit okay. So now we've saved the file to my desktop. Uh, and now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to switch over to Final Cut Pro. So now I've got a clip loaded in here um, of the drone flying over the mountain again. Uh, you guys are probably getting tired of seeing this clip, but I just think it's cool looking. And honestly, I have not had an opportunity to get back out with the drone in the last couple of days. So I'm just using uh, some of my uh, most recent footage for that. So I've got my footage cut, I've got it down in my timeline, uh, and I've loaded an adjustment layer on top of my, um, on top of my clip. So now what I've done is I've applied the MLUT plugin uh, to my adjustment layer, but as you can see here, it says no LUT selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to MLUT library, and it's gonna bring up my selection tools, and I'm gonna click on import, and I'm gonna select that snowsteps.cube file that we created, and I wanna go ahead and put it in the J Blake photo category, because it's one of mine. And I'm gonna hit okay. Depending on the size and the complexity of your LUT, this can take a second. Um, if you've got a really high grid point LUT, which I don't recommend doing, I've crashed my computer a couple times doing that. But um, So it loaded it in, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And then I'm gonna hit okay. So now it has applied this LUT, and as you can see, we've got that kind of filmic look. Um, and it looks pretty good. I actually like it quite a bit. I'm gonna go over into the color board um, for the original. I did do some color correction on this footage a little bit. And I'm gonna bring my midtones down just a smidge here. Um, I think that looks a little bit better. And then we'll go back. And otherwise, I think this is actually pretty good. Let me just go ahead and um, play this through. I think I can export this and, and show it to you guys. So I'll, I'll do that now. So I just really liked the look of that last one that we just made uh, with the, the snow. Uh, and so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna throw that up on my website as a free download uh, for that, uh, that, that dot cube file. Um, so here's what you do. Go ahead and head over to my website. I'll go ahead and put the link in the description uh, to where you can get that free product. Or you can just go to jblake.photo. Uh, and one of the links at the top says products. Go ahead and click on that. And it's the one product that's going to be listed on that page. I'll probably do more of these over time. I'm going to give this LUT away for free. Feel free to play with it and just kind of let me know, uh, you know what you're doing with it. If you're making your own LUTs, I would love you to uh, send me something either in the comments or better off, actually hit me up on Twitter. I'm at at jblakephotog. Uh, go and hit me up on Twitter, follow me, and send me a comment, um, send me a tweet about what you're doing with your LUTs if you made any new LUTs. Also, go ahead and check me out on Instagram. Uh, I'm at jblakephoto and uh, hopefully you can uh, find some inspiration there. I, I hope you enjoyed this video, a little shorter than some of the previous videos that I've done uh, recently, but I hope that this was interesting for you. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. That really helps me out a lot. Go ahead and add a comment if there's something that you're doing with LUTs or something you wanna share. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. That tells me that people are interested in the stuff that I'm doing and that you'd like to see more of it. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.